Hey there fellow learners and curious minds. Welcome back to our channel Learn Code and Quiz. And today we are excited to introduce a new series on data structure and algorithm. Have you ever wondered how your favorite apps, games and websites work so efficiently? Well, that's all thanks to the magic of data structure and algorithms. They are the building blocks that powers the digital universe and make everything run smoothly. In this exciting video, we are going to demystify this seemingly complex concept and break them down into bite-sized pieces that anyone can understand. Whether you are a beginner taking your first steps into the world of programming or you are looking to refresh your knowledge, you are in the right place. So think of data structure as the different ways we organize and store data, like arranging books on shelf or stacking blocks. We'll explore popular data structures like arrays, linked list, stacks, queues, and trees, and understand when and why to use each one of them. Plus, we'll uncover the secrets of efficient searching and sorting algorithms that can dramatically speed up your programming. And fear not, because we won't just be talking theory. We'll delve into hands-on ex examples, coding walkthroughs, and even challenge ourselves with some coding exercise. By the end of this video, you'll have a solid grasp on the core concept and be ready to tackle coding interviews with confidence. And also, before I begin this video, I have a small request. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you won't miss any of our upcoming videos. We have got a whole series lined up that will take you from beginner to coding ninja in no time. All right, now it's time to start with the basic sorting algorithm called bubble sort. Now let's look into a real life problem to understand the bubble sorting algorithm. The problem is about sorting the marbles of different masses and we'll sort them in the ascending order. Now we have here seven marbles of different masses and the smallest mass is 11 grams and the highest one is the 90 gram. And all of, all of the other marbles are in between these two masses. So now in order to sort, uh, we'll use the very simple basic sorting algorithm that is bubble sort and for that what we'll do we'll choose uh, the first two marble this first one is 64 grams and 34 grams and then we'll compare if the first marble that is 64 is greater than the second one then we'll swap so in that case so we put it here the left hand side and 64 will be on the right hand side because we started with the 64 and now we put it back here and compare with compare it with the next one which is 25 grams and now again we see the 64 is greater than 25 so we swap the order and now 25 is here and 64 is here and we do the same thing here so 12 be smaller than 64 so we put it in the left hand side and 64 comes here and same for 22 and we swap it and here 11 and 64 here and now when you compare this last two 64 and 90 we say we see that 64 is not greater than 90 and then we stop our swapping procedure so 64 remains here and in that way you can see that we have sorted almost so all the marbles which are on the left hand side of 64 are smaller in masses than the 64 so we we apply the same procedure again and again until we we have exhausted the array and everything is sorted so now we begin with 34 and compare with 25 so we put it on the left hand side 
and now we compare this one and this one so as 12 be smaller so it gets to the left hand side and now we compare between these two and so 22 is here and same way 11 is here and we stop here because we see the 64 is indeed greater than 34 so we stop the swapping procedure and again start with this 25 and then we we compare and put it in the left hand side and this one also same and this one is also same so 11 goes to the left hand side and 25 and then we stop because 25 is not greater than 34 so now here is couple more swapping we need to do and as you can see we are almost at the end and everything is now looking fine and in the ascending order so 11 is here now this is the last step so we compare these two and 11 is here no uh, and 22 is here and we compare between these two so 12 goes on the left hand side and comes here that's it so now we have successfully sorted the uh, all the marbles in the ascending order as you can see 11 12 22 25 30 64 and 90 this is the basics of the um, bubble sort algorithm and in the next part what we will do we will follow this logic and write a python code to do the same that we have described here them in python so let me write it here bubble sort algorithm and for that first we define a function called bubble sort bubble sort and it takes an array as the argument so i call it arr here and first we need to know what is the length of the array that i call n and that will be the length of the array now after we get the length of the array so we have to use a for loop to run through the array and that's in a that for loop will be the variable will be i and it will go from 0 to n minus 1 and we introduce a variable here if the array is already sorted or not so at the beginning it will be false and now we need to introduce another for loop so that i call j variable here for j in range it will start from 0 and go to the n minus i minus 1 element here i'll explain shortly why because when i is 0 so you you see you are going to see 0 to n minus 1 all of the all of the marbles that we have previously seen and then you sort them and then you update i as 1 and then again you sort rest of the marbles and so on and so forth so so this this goes from 0 to n minus i minus 1 now here as we have previously seen so we need to compare the elements so i'll compare it here so if array j is greater than array j plus 1 that means the jth element is greater than the next one so we need to then swap the elements so here we'll swap so array j and j plus 1 will element will be swapped so it will be array j plus 1 and array j and as we have swapped so the variable will be updated to true so true will be capital yes here and this is the first step so for each j it will do the same thing and when it comes back from the array all the elements will be sorted so now we can break 
out from the loop if all of them are sorted so if not swapped so we will break out from this loop so this completes the bubble sorting definition and now we'll call the array to sort so this is the array that we have previously seen the masses of the marble from 64 up to 90 and for that we need to call the function bubble sort and give the array as an argument so array to sort it will go into the bubble sort and here interesting thing is that we haven't written anything from the function because we don't, don't need to do because it automatically swaps the elements so the array will be sorted so after we call the bubble sort we can directly call bubble sort and we will get the same array but it will be sorted so now we can print the sorted TED sorted array as the same one as as of the original so this will be array to sort and that's that is the complete code now we need to run the code uh, to check whether we have done it correctly so let me open a terminal here so I open a terminal and check so I run the bubble sort algorithm yes it has done its job so the array was 64 and 90 was not sorted and after that after the bubble sort algorithm you can see it is 11 12 22 up to 90 in the ascending order so that means it has sorted the array correctly so the bubble sort is the simple and the most basic algorithm that you can use to sort an array but if the array size is large this algorithm is not efficient algorithm so in the later videos we will see the other efficient algorithm that it can use and that has less complexity to run here you can see we have used two for loops so that goes i runs from 0 to n and then j also runs from the 0 to n so we'll show how to calculate the complexity of this algorithm and if you calculate so you'll see that it is if you uh, calculate the complexity you will see that it is n square so but the other algorithms like the merge sort will be better algorithm to use for a large number of array elements but for the simple case or to for the for the basic understanding you can use bubble sort uh, for a small number of elements Now let's discuss about the time complexity of the bubble sort algorithm. So in the function that we have defined, so we have used two for loops. So first loop goes to the entire range of the array and that is n, the length of the array. And we have another loop which is j and it runs from 0 to n minus i minus 1. For each value of the i that we in previous loop so that means we have two loops so i runs from 0 to n and inside j runs from 0 to n minus i minus 1 so the time complexity or the average time complexity would be o n into n minus 1 over 2 and that is equivalent to uh, o n square so this time uh, the, for the bubble sort algorithm the time complexity is O n square. Now we can divide the time complexity for and see what would be the time complexity for two different cases. One is the worst case and where we have seen that it will perform at O n square and for the best case uh, we can say it will perform as linear scale of n that is O n. So I will explain why is that so because when if you if you if you see if the array is sorted or if you provide an array which is already sorted so we don't need the j loop to to sort the array anymore but we have to check each and every element of the array so that the time complexity will be 
O n. Now that as we have reached to the end of the video, but before you do, I will provide you a food of thought for this video. So we have already defined the function in the following fashion, but we have used here a simultaneous object that when we are comparing the array element, array g and the next element g plus one, we updated the, or we swapped the element, array j, uh, the element j as, with the j plus one and j plus i, j plus one as j. So this simultaneous update has been done by following this line of code. So in, in a single line, we have updated the two values. Now, uh, in the ideal case, you want to know or uh, the what would be the code if you want to do it sequentially uh, or instead of the simultaneous object. So that will be the food for third for today's video. But please stay tuned to get more updates and let us know your thoughts on the comment section below. So we'll be very happy to get your valuable feedback in the comment section. So please stay tuned and also don't forget to like, subscribe and comment to our channel. Thank you so much.